We're almost finished with the fruit bowl. Before I finalize it, I want to add a little bit of thickness because it currently has an infinitely thin wall. I'll select the object, and in the Modify panel, I've got the Stretch modifier selected, so I'm at the top of the stack. And from the modifier list, I'll choose a modifier called Shell. Scroll down to that. Shell. And in the parameters, we have an inner and outer amount. I only want a very thin shell, not a very thick one. I'll set the inner amount to 0 0.2 inches. 0.2 and press Enter. And the outer amount I'll set to 0. So that's my fruit bowl. I'm pretty happy with how it looks. And let's take this opportunity to illustrate a little bit more about the dependencies in the modifier stack because the order of operations is determined by the location of the modifier in the stack. Let's go to our four viewport layout with Alt-W. Go into the front view, zoom in there with the wheel. And with that object selected, I can move the modifiers around in the stack. Let's say I take this stretch modifier, select it, and because I have show end result turned on, I can see the end result after all of the modifiers. Take that stretch and just drag and drop it. I'll click and hold the mouse and drag that down to just above the sphere and below the volume select modifier. And you see I've got a blue line there that indicates where I'm going to drop this selected modifier. When I release the mouse, the stretch has been moved down. And that has changed the end result here because now what's happening is the stretch is changing the shape which in turn changes what is inside the volume select. And therefore we have a different shape to the fruit bowl. I can just as easily restore this, take that stretch and drag it back up to just below the shell modifier. Okay, cool. So that's how dragging and dropping works in the modifier list. And now let's talk about collapsing the modifier stack or sometimes known as baking the mesh. In other programs, it's called by different names. For example, in Maya, it's known as deleting the construction history. When you collapse the stack or bake the mesh, what you do is you erase all of the modifiers. And those, of course, are the simple formulaic instructions for how to build this object. And instead of a collection of modifiers, you're left with a raw mesh object, which is a bunch of points on a surface. And the analogy here is baking a cake. And that's why we use the word bake, because it's very similar to the concept of baking a cake. What you're seeing here in the modifier stack is the recipe for the cake. And when 3ds Max loads the scene, it follows all of the instructions in that recipe and ends up with a particular model shape. Well, before we put this into a larger scene, such as the loft apartment, our best practice is to actually erase all the modifiers and bake this down to a raw mesh. And the reason for that is it's going to be more efficient. Once you bake the mesh, you destructively remove all of the instructions, but it will basically be more efficient you'll increase the file size because you're recording the positions of every point on that surface rather than these very simple instructions. So after baking or collapsing the stack, you'll have a larger file size, but you will probably use less memory. 3ds Max doesn't have to calculate all of these instructions. It just has to simply load a raw mesh file. And because it doesn't have to calculate the stack, the scene may actually load more quickly. Before you collapse the stack or bake the mesh, it's very important that you save the file in its procedural state. And because I've added the shell here, I've made some changes to the scene. And my best practice now is to save again before collapsing the stack. So let's do that. I'll go into the file menu and choose save as. It's going to save into my current project scenes folder. And I'll call it 0408 Fruit Bowl, and then an underscore. And this is important. I'm going to put in 
a word that indicates that this is a procedural model and that it has the instructions in it. It's not just a raw mesh or a final output. And to do that, I'm going to use the word stack. You can put anything you want in there. You know, just make it an obvious indicator that this file is a procedural file. And it's important that you save before collapsing the stack because just like with baking a cake, you can't unbake a cake. So if I collapse the stack and then saved, and then I didn't have a version that had the stack intact, it would be very difficult for me to edit that object in the future. Okay, so I'm thinking ahead, I'm future-proofing my work. What if there are changes to this? I need to make sure that it's possible for me to revert changes or to make edits to the stack. Okay, so that's done, I'll click Save. And now I'm ready to collapse the stack. And the best way to do that is to convert it to editable. With the object still selected, right-click anywhere in the view. And in the quad menu, in the lower right, you'll see Convert To. And from there, you have some options. Editable patch is definitely not what we want. A patch is a spline-based object. We want this to be a polygonal object or a mesh object. Well, you might think that you would choose mesh, but an editable mesh object dates to version one of 3ds Max. It's a very simple mesh object, and it doesn't have a lot of editing capabilities. If we wanted to edit this object in the future, our best option would be to convert to editable poly, which is a more current technology. We're going to be using editable poly in this course for polygonal modeling. All right, so I'll release the mouse and convert to editable poly. That's done, and we no longer have a modifier stack. Instead, now we have something called an editable poly object. And it has a whole bunch of parameters and also works in conjunction with the ribbon. We're going to be looking at that in a later chapter. At this point, I've baked the cake. And just like with a real cake, there's no way for me to know how this object was made. In other words, you can't tell the ingredients of a cake by eating it. So I'm going to save this as a collapsed version now, and once again, name it appropriately so I'll be able to find it later. Go back into the File menu and choose Save As, and this time it's going to be called 0408 Fruit Bowl Mesh. That way I know that it is a mesh object and not a procedural model. Go ahead and click Save. And that's done. We can go ahead and check the file sizes. I've got that already loaded up in Windows Explorer, so I'll minimize 3ds Max. And here's my scenes folder in my current project. Here we go, Fruit Bowl Mesh has got a file size of 800 kilobytes. And we've got Fruit Bowl Stack, which has got a slightly smaller file size of 580 kilobytes. And of course, the more dense the mesh is, the higher the level of detail, the greater the difference between the procedural version and the collapsed version will be. And that's a basic demonstration of how to use the modifier stack and to collapse it, ending up with a final output mesh that will be lightweight and efficient. And that concludes the chapter on using the modifier stack.